Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the regular scheduled work session for July 19th, 2021 at 6 p.m. Good evening, council, citizens, and administration. Ms. Burner, if you'd call the roll, please. Yeah, Mayor Lowry. Here. Councilman Grimm. I'm here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Notowski. Here. Councilman Todd is absent. Councilman Rodwell is absent. Vice Mayor Cook. I'm here. <clears throat> Five members present. Very much. And so moving on, Mr. Vice Mayor, would you like to do the invitation this evening? Go ahead. You good? Yep. All right. If you will, please bow your heads in our Heavenly Father. Please guide us tonight as we attempt to do the business for the citizens of this city. Please wrap your arms around our first responders, our sheriff's deputies, our EMTs, our firefighters and particularly our deputies. In God's name we pray, amen. Thank you so much. I pledge to goodbye to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, unique liberty and justice for all. Action in minutes will be done in regular session. Communication is none. City manager report will be done in regular session. Comments from the members of the public. All right. Community reports none. Resolutions and ordinances will be handled in regular session. Other business. Legislation Thank discussion. Bridge. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I catch you right when you put that piece of candy in. You did right, right at the <laughs> perfect time. And it's I'm good. I'm thinking right legislation discussion. Is that where we're at? Yes, sir. All right, all right, all right. Well, let me get my agenda out here. And thank you. Uh, so for the resolutions uh, tonight, we have a resolution 2021-13R. Uh, that's actually amending our CIP, so it's just introduced tonight. And we will have to vote on that on 8-2. But we are amending that for two specific purposes. One is for this uh, cost of the mayor's court for software or the miscellaneous items. And then the second one, uh, Mr. Kiko ran a meeting on my behalf when I was uh, out of town with some family members for that special meeting regarding the American Rescue Times funds. Um, I was told at the end of that meeting it was very well. Um, and then council was okay with doing a, uh, most of our wastewater repairs. So we've amended the CIP to have um, every cent of that first dump go on our wastewater plant so we can get those clarifiers done. Uh, we're going to do, do, do two clarifiers. That's still not enough to cover the total amount of the project, so we are going to dip into some reserve fund to get with Ms. Harris. It's only about a $40,000 difference that we can go to try to have a pocket for and go and get them both done. Um, so that's, uh, again, introduced only tonight. We voted on an 8-2. We have Ordinance 21-2022. That was introduced on uh, July 6th. That is public hearing and action tonight. Uh, that is an ordinance authorizing the registration of the New Carlisle's Mayor's Court with the Supreme Court of Ohio and other state government offices and the filing of any related and necessary reports. As we saw when that, introduced, uh, that was introduced at the last meeting, it actually covers a lot of ground in the Mayor's Court, so that is up for a vote tonight. Um, we have or on the agenda right now is Ordinance 21-23E. Uh, that E stands for Emergency Ordinances. I will be seeking a motion from Council later on to remove that legislation piece from the agenda. Since it is an emergency ordinance, we do need six Council members <coughs> present, at least six Council members present to vote on that. Uh, so we do need six yeses for that to pass. Um, but that has to deal with our yearly audits. Um, how we've done it before in the past, we've done every single year. Um, just so we have the opportunity to discuss it. Um, I was uh, handed uh, a document that I had not seen on Friday. So I wanted to redo the or ordinance to allow for us to pay for a one legislative slide swipe to do all five years that we have the audit. Instead of every year coming back and just you know, doing additional legislation and paying for that legislation, we have an opportunity just to get all on one. So with that new information that came to me Friday, we have that drafted. Unfortunately, again, we won't be able to vote on it tonight. We'll have to push it back to 8-2. We'll get the more discussion on it then. Um, we have Ordinance 2021-24. That is introduction, introduction tonight, public and hearing and action on August 2nd. And that is an ordinance employing a magistrate for the mayor's court. I think that's pretty self-explanatory, uh, but we need legislation to employ that particular position, so that's in front of council uh, for August 2nd. 
We also have Ordinance 2021-25. Also, just into introduction tonight, public and hearing action on 8-2. And that is a very similar ordinance, but this one is an ordinance employing a clerk for the uh, New Carlisle Mayor's Court. And then the last legislation that we're introducing tonight, and we uh, action on 8-2, and that is an ordinance replacing and uh, I'm sorry, replacing a certain section of Section 248 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle, Ohio, regarding city policy. Um, what that policy is is our credit card policy. We had one in existence already, but the state has since passed House Bill 312, and our current policy was not uh, in line with the new state requirements. Uh, so we are adjusting our policy to fix that. Now that's all for legislation. We'd be happy to answer any questions. Council, any questions, comments, feedback from Mr. Bridge? You've got a thorough job apparently. That is the goal. I mean, that more people won't ask for. So, okay. Well, with that being said, um, I guess we could drop down to other business and be open for any city related matters. Um, I'll bring up one, uh, just to be honest. Sorry, I thought my phone was turned on. I thought it was going to turn this off. The Lottery Commission, I must have won. <laughs> um, the, I know we talked about before the uh, recycling dumpster at the pool. Um, it's, it's an ongoing issue. Um, there's been, you know, recently I think there was a couple more mattresses dropped off, a water heater tank. Um, I just didn't know if the council wanted to discuss it. We need to possibly get rid of the community recycling uh, bin or moving it to a new location uh, it might hinder those problems because I'm assuming it at the same time I mean I know it's a, ser it's a service that council agreed to do and it's nice I know there's a lot of people who use it mm -hmm. um, you know, when I bought a new uh, freezer I put my stuff down in there it's nice to have it buy a big bulk of cardboard <laughs> items uh, but at the same time I think it's also costing us more than what it should be because it's getting abused so much I don't know how that works as far as um, you know, if that would be Mr. Kitko's question. When there are items like that, couches, uh, water heaters, whatever it may be, does the city get charged an extra fee to, to deal with that? Uh, we don't We don't see that charge coming in, but I had already talked to waste management about that, and they do it as a, as a nice gesture, mm -hmm. but at some point in time, those nice gestures do run out because someone has to pay the duck fee on all that. Right. Uh, but it is part of our contract that we have with waste management so I think they kind of go above and beyond. Uh, but I have had a discussion with that about, you know, a lot's a lot and enough is enough. Okay. 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 Well, I don't know. Um, I, do, I do not know. I mean, I, the chief may not like this idea. Maybe when the house came down and we had more parking, would that be, that might be an issue too, though, with emerging see vehicles set there and people trying to come in and I, I don't know I, uh, I have no idea where to move it I can make a suggestion please uh, we just got our camera set up at the city building and when Mr. Kiko gets back in town I will have it on my notes to sit down and talk with him and um, see if we can get that actually on the city building property um, we have a little bit of an area right there we can probably put a pad in we may have to leave a parking space or two but I kind of don't want to move forward with that until I sit down and not respect that how his position and title just kind of run it by him but we want to put it to a place that it's not far away from the set of cameras. So if we need to get a license plate or press charges, we have that capability. Mm -hmm. And right now, like I said, the city building having all those exterior cameras, and they got, they're really good cameras. I mean, mm -hmm. you, could, you, could, you could definitely make out um, a license plate, not an issue at all. But it's just a matter of do we have enough room? Because now we have to account for the two that we have on site, plus the ones that would be coming over and we have to make sure that they can actually get in and get out. Because right now they have them double stacked. Recycling, trash, or trash recycling doesn't matter. And how they do is they pull one out, move it, get the other one, put that one back, and then put the other one in place. So, and we got to take into account the vehicle that they drive as well. It's massive. So it's already been turning in our heads about where to put it. Um, but if we put it at the city building, hopefully that gets a lot more um, people who don't live in the town use it. Yeah. That's the complaint we're getting now is that people are coming from outside the city to dump stuff there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have one more. Would council have an, an issue if we move that to a place? The only thing that we'd have to do is I'll forget with Melinda at waste management because I do believe 
isn't that right now that has to be there for the pool use yeah i mean they do recycle and then once it once that pulls over we have it moved up. i can look at the wording on the contract but we may have to come to council to amend the contract okay that's what i'm essentially going to get now. question if we remove the recycling dumpster does this mean that your regular dumpster is going to have to be enlarged um, in theory yeah probably i i don't know if that would be a good question for this well cool. I, I would assume yeah it would make sense but at the same time maybe not because you know from what she's saying she doesn't even get a chance to use it the recycling bin too much and all of her stuff's going in the trash so maybe because it's already full because it's already full so i don't mm -hmm. know another thing we thought too when we had a brief discussion is there a way to move the current dumpster set up closer to the pool to the camera and yeah to the camera you know that may alleviate depending on where it's at you know at some point in time if we can't find a good spot for it that we can record stuff on the council may have to have that dis discussion about do we even have it at all right. i mean that's something you guys will have to decide later on down the road we do have to give preference to the pool employees i would love for it to be closer because even pool employees walk across the parking lot at night to get to the dumpsters it's already far away from where from the building what it is but i also know it's, it's a tough situation about that around the building to have so two big large items so um and we got what a month another month before the pool is closed down for the season mm -hmm. late august late august well the other situation is we're going to have to be careful if we do move that the regular dumpster is the black top going to be able to support the weight of that front wheel to that truck right. without digging in and creating a running atmosphere that's a good point that's a good point that's the point. How would you probably be able to tell us how to that trade in with the city building if that was a location you guys wanted? Well, it, that'll work because they currently use it now. Oh, do they? Yeah. I'm thinking of if it's closer to the pool, like this oh, closer to the I pool see. building. Okay. okay. Gotcha. That might be an issue. Mr. How wide is your driveway? <laughs> It'll fit. <laughs> <laughs> It'll fit. Community duct station at the mayor's personal house. Good like, <laughs> yes. thing April ain't sitting there. She's done throwing something at you by now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <The pictures. laughs> All right. um, did you have anything else on this topic? Um, one, I, I don't know if you knew this. Uh, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Pickering will be here. You know when maybe Mr. Hutchinson knows, does he have a um, street sweeping scheduled for, I think he does it usually in the fall, doesn't he? Yeah, I think it is that. I think they do it after the. If I'm not mistaken, I think they do it after the leaf pick up, just so they get the leaf done. It's actually supposed to be done a little bit before hair is applied. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because it's a couple. It's a week or two before hair. Remember last, not last year, the year before we had the bag that was broke, pulled the mud out, and we had a big mud line throughout the streets. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I think it been it used to be done right before that, but then we moved it to do it right before Harry the flight. I don't know if it's been mentioned. I don't know if it's worth doing it now this late in the season, but possibly looking at it, and I know it'd be a great decision financially to not doing it twice a year because, you know, up on Main Street, it's mm -hmm. literally bad, really bad. I mean, I know you guys have apparently had some discussions lately about the curbs and whatnot, but I mean, just the, just the gravel alone, it's really slick up there if you're walking around. You know, well, yeah, note it because we'll be talking our budget here pretty soon. That's something council wants to do. We'll definitely allocate for it. Because I think he, I think if I remember right, it's to, to do the entire town. I think he said it was a little over five thousand to do the town. I don't recall the cost. Yeah, I mean it wasn't nothing astronomical. I, I thought it'd be higher than what I think it was. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, just something I want to talk about. When talk about. Aurora paid ten thousand dollars a year. I'm going to look at how much it costs to buy one outright. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're not going to pay someone ten thousand a year, five, even if it's five. I mean, what, what would I don't? And I'm saying that without having no yeah. money information in front of me at all. I was looking through got deals and they uh, they were only twenty thousand to two hundred thousand. Mm. Yeah, that's it. Come more or less with that back down with that twenty <laughs> side. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. That, you. with a coupon. <laughs> it's a group on discount. <laughs> Something to ponder, but yeah. Awesome. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I have a citizen who came to me and had called the police because someone had agreed to do something. She made a down payment on it and. Uh, they 
didn't do the work. He called the police. It was fraud. And they, the officers told her they couldn't do anything because fraud is not a criminal action. And my understanding is that fraud, simple fraud, is a fifth degree felony. Hence, we're all looking at you. <laughs> Yeah, she gave them the money. No, they did no work. I don't know his name. I could contact her and see if she has it. Okay. Say the question again, was it why did they move it from Well first week it was in CVS parking lot. Right. And this time it was out on the street and the street was closed and there was a lot more traffic <laughs> and it was just the block between Jefferson and Madison. Mm -hmm. Don't they do that for the night markets? Yeah, I think it's for the night markets only. They market, the street for the night markets, but not for the regular Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, it was much. It was a much nicer setup where people got to kind of mingle and. Yeah, I think they only asked to shut it down for the. We got to watch how many times we get the state route, so we can't go to ODOT and be like, hey, every Saturday we're going to shut this down. <laughs> you know. So it's kind of like few and far between. So we do it for Heritage Flight, and then they, that's the only day that they usually request the floor is to shut it down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was just curious because it's much better. It's a much better setup, and you get a much better turnout. I think you get a much better turnout because it's a night market. You know, the streets open, and I, I think it does have a little impact on. But I saw the pictures of that night market, and it was packed. I mean, vendors, like a lot. And were there more vendors than normal for that? Okay, that's what I thought. But yeah, they, when they requested, it was only for the evening ones. Okay. Good. Mr. Graham, what's your last name? Well, in, in retrospect to what Peggy just said, there was a little conversation at the Coffee and Donuts the other Saturday in regards to why uh, the farmer's market could not utilize Washington Street. And consequently, I believe we could block off Washington Street, have the market on both sides of Washington Street, and a lot less, I guess the word is, pedestrian involvement there. And in talking with Mr. Bridge, I, I think that uh, 
the people at the farmer's market are the ones that are making their, I guess the words, their own decision as to what locations to have? Yeah, we don't, as a city, we don't, we don't have any involvement as far as where things go and, you know, stuff like that. I would be more than happy to approach I I personally think it would be a lot better situation as far as the uh, pedestrian traffic number. It also puts it in a good place for the parking lot, the city parking lot right. there. <coughs> I would have no problem with uh, the way it's set up now. Because before they moved it down to that corner, they, Mr. Grimm, didn't they, Councilman Grimm, didn't they, we put out barricades like the first five, ten feet from the sidewalk, just kind of extend that. And, yes. But then the, there was no buffer there because the, the northbound traffic would be right next to the barricades. Yeah. Yeah. Originally, it wasn't that. Years ago, it was. Would it be the kind of. Would it be the consensus of council to have Linda go ahead and talk to him? No. Anything else, sir? Not unless you want to entertain a motion to uh, excuse the two gentlemen. No, I'm good. <laughs> we are allowed to have your session. <laughs> right. No excuse for vacation if we all can. Uh... I have a question. Yes. We have now a whole roster of people for the uh, Charter Review Committee, but the Charter calls for them to be interviewed by council before they are accepted. They've met, from what I understand. They, they've had a couple of you know, little get-togethers. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes, and you know, as far as the interview process, I would say that yes, according to the charter, we probably should interview them, but we seem to have a major problem in attracting anybody to serve on this committee. And being the fact that probably we have interviewed one, two, three, probably four of those people for past committees, is this a mute point? That would probably be a, uh, I mean, to get a, a solid the, answer on that. The people you would want to have on a Parks and Recreation Board aren't necessarily the people you would want to have on the Charter Review Committee. I'm not saying that well, related to anybody. I just, you know, people have different skills and if we interviewed them for another kind of committee, we didn't interview them regarding the Charter and... Did you have something, Mr. Bridge? Yeah, let me look at this real quick. Where's the charter review? What section of it? I guess the section under the charter review and I. In section eight. No, oh, that's the planning board. I don't know if that was back. Go towards the end. Linda, where does it say that it needs to be interviewed? It said not later than the first day of January 18 and 18, every eight years thereafter, the council shall appoint by majority vote of its member a charter review commission consisting no less of five electors of the city. Yeah. 
Members of the Charter Review Commission may not at any time of the appointment of the commission nor within a period of six months uh, prior there, there to be or have been elected or appointed an official of the city or any employee of the city. Such commission shall review the charter of the city and within the time designated by council at the time its members were appointed or with any extensions therefore granted by council recommend to council such authorizations, revisions, and amendments if any to this charter and its judgment are desirable. The commission shall act in advisory capacity to the council regarding charter revisions. After consideration of the rec recommendations of the Charter Review Commission, council may submit any or all such proposed alterations, revisions, or amendments to, to this charter to the electors of the city in a manner provided by section 10.03. In terms of, in terms of members of the commission shall terminate at the end of the period designated by council and at the time of the appointment or any extension thereof. You don't see a uh, so what I think we're seeing is getting, it, it, if you look on our regular codified under boards, it, I think it has that term. For like a general blanket? Yeah, but I'm almost positive that this particular committee, charter review, does not fall under those. Yeah, I don't remember doing it in the past. I mean, I'm not saying we did. So I think she, I think she is right because it does say interview under the normal section, but that's for like planning board, DZA, and stuff like that. I don't think, does anyone have our codes pulled up that they can pull I up? I do. So do you see anything under, um, Boards and commissions, so you'll want to look under, I want to say it's section 266, right? It's under employees general, I think, but then it falls as under boards and commissions. 266 is the charter. So for what we're discussing now, the Charter Review Commission doesn't have to be interviewed. You guys can appoint for that. But however, um, I just want council to know, and you guys need to communicate this down to that board, they are subject to the same sunshine laws as council is. So their meetings have to be advertised. They have to have a legal ad put in. They have to take minutes. They have to function as the Parks and Rec Board were, the DZA, any of that. Um, so, if, um, and I, I think there are some members of that commission coming tonight, by the way, to okay. speak to you guys. If they have a meeting, let's just say for conversation sake, let's say whatever, next Friday, would she be able to put, put it in form or do they need to do it on their own? No, she can go through the okay. Yeah. Okay. Or they can send it to me because I know she's got a million things going on it, but someone does have to put the legal ad okay. in, in the thing. And I'm not sure that Cox Media would respond to someone that doesn't have a new Carlisle thing on their email or something. Good point. Yeah. Okay. Well, if they're here tonight, we can get one. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like, according to that, have you guys decided when their term begins and ends? You might want to review the charter and look at some additional things that council needs to do to set their terms and all that. Okay. Good group of people, though. Yeah. Real good group. Great, great group. Great group of people. Group of people. Yeah, I got a bigger thing in my mouth that might gain me, which as soon as I put it in, I'm like, yeah, this is too big to have in my mouth. I'm trying to get to it. <laughs> 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 all right. Anything else, Mr. Okowski? Nope. Nothing to do. Then. Vice do you want to get into this uh, So this is still kind of in draft form. I, I had a long week last week, long weekend. Um, so I did it Saturday night. I think I set it out to you guys about 9 o'clock. I was tired, so there were mistakes on it. I went and cleaned it up today. Quick with Linda on the phone. Thanks for pointing some things out. <coughs> so I cleaned it up a little bit more that, past that. This took about two weeks to compose because I really, uh, every a lot of cities have these things out there. So you, know, you kind of review them, pick, pick and choose from each other. So that's why it led to the two packages, uh, President's Day package, Memorial Day package. Uh, President's Day package, it will get you President's Day, Memorial Day, July 4th, and Veterans Day. Because on top of just researching policy, I also actually looked at some minutes of council meetings that they had, and they had some citizens come in and say, oh my God, January, I forgot to do it, and I'm, I'm back against the wall for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. Either Christmas, New Year. So some of these cities that now have a few tier sections, you know, if you get it in after, January, but before the April deadline, you can have the remaining holidays, Memorial, Fourth of July, uh, Veterans Day, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so again, this is open to councils, you know, changes or whatever you guys want to do, but it is a good starting point. Uh, the cost, I'll be honest with you, some of these banners I looked at the city were 150, 200 bucks. Mm -hmm. I don't want to charge our citizens that much to have a banner. So um, Studio 10 would be charging us 45. 
Um, so we do have some, some costs that we have to take on for the city because we'll be taking them up, making, uh, placing them, removing them, using the vehicle for manpower, et cetera, to get them all up. Um, and Maduro today package is a little bit cheaper just because you don't get the uh, extra holiday. Um, banner specifications, I spoke with Chrissy on that this morning. Um, originally, I wanted the picture sent to straight to Studio 10, but it's, I just decided to have it all go through our office. Um, we have to, if we have to go back and forth about the picture not being good, we'll have to do that. Basically, Studio 10 role is just going to be, hey, I got, a, I got one, make the banner. Kind of a check for the 45, we retain the rest for the, for the program. Um, some of the policies I researched had this and some did not. I don't know why they didn't have it, but I did put a little clause in ours. Um, it is the under second page under additional program information, that last bullet point, and it has to do with banners that are lost, stolen, damaged in their wind, or unfit for display. Um, if you want to get that reproduced and set it up for the fit, we have to charge the $55 fee. So the new banner would have to be made, and we do have to go put it back up. So if council would have slashed that price at all, which you know it's, it's feasible if you do so, just keep in mind that we all we're always going to have at least $45 out to pay, pay for the banner, mm -hmm. and that's where my head was at coming up with these numbers. And I think it's fair. Yeah. I think 75 is fair. I think 65 is fair compared to what some of these other places were charging. Mm -hmm. Um, it's really a, pro a policy that doesn't have to be too, too drawn out. You know, we know where it's going to be. We know the holidays is going to be on. Um, I do have it in here that you know, once they pay for it, we take it down. We'll return it to them if they want to keep it. Um, some cities they have this program going. Let's say, if you buy one in 2001, you can have it go for two or three years. Well, looking at their minutes it, from the internal, it's hard to track that because you'll have. You, of course, we'll have an Excel sheet. We'll have, you know, this person went on in 2021. He's up for two years, you know. But we got to also try to think about the next people coming in. So I just have it simple. It's one year, one out, 75 bucks. If you want it again, we apply for the next year. Do we, uh, two questions, and thank you. Mm -hmm. um, the, um, should we put something in here? I don't know, unless I'm just overlooking it. Uh, for example, say someone gets a, a package and you know, say say the, the printer, maybe she's out of ink or the banner's on back order. And they're mm -hmm. like, oh, you didn't get it up, but you need to put something in there that says, you know, obviously there are stipulations where they may be out of uh, supplies. Just to cover yourself so they don't say, well, I paid for it. Why wasn't it up? Well, we can't control the supplies that are to our printer. Yeah, maybe like a while supplies last or some, like, something like that. Well, I mean, just that we can't control unforeseen issues with the supplies. Yeah, it, it'll, it's something like that. I do the same. Okay. I agree with you 100%. Yeah, I just, mm -hmm. I don't want them fighting anyone's head off in the office for something that we can't control. You know, she's, you know, all of a sudden had a big job the day before that order was put in, and it's going to take a week or two to get ink because the thing's being so hard to get right now. You know, just kind of, just something to cover us on that and that would that to be. That is like for legal safeguards. I have one other thing. Yeah. We've been talking about getting together to talk about a vision and a plan for what we would like to see happen in the city. Uh, and we said we could just do that in a here. And I think Bill mentioned something about it. He knew some people who had done this and used a facilitator. Did you follow up on that? Yeah, just let me uh, hold, hold you up for just a second. Sure. Make sure everyone was done with this before we go on to a different oh, okay. stuff. You guys have anything else? Okay. Good. Can I, can I ask, is council okay with the pricing? Yes. Did any, so am I able to move forward after I make some of these changes? We'll have to revisit this again in regular session just to give the motion. Right. But um, there may be some small changes coming in after I you know, sit down and talk to the appropriate people. But for the most part, it, it counts as okay with it. Fantastic. Fantastic. This is a one one year deal. Seventy five, sixty five is a one year. Deal. Mm -hmm. They want to get to again next year. They they start the process over again. Okay. Well, I guess my question is, I I've now got a banner that I paid X amount of dollars for, and you're going to charge me seventy five dollars again for next year for another banner. And I'm going to give you my banner that you can display the second year. Yeah, but it's also going to have a year of weathering on it, too. 
So the last thing you want to do, and any time you do kind of these, these policy or contract development, you don't want any kind of what is what I what, what really is a commonly accepted practice is what we call subjective terms. You know, so basically, if they bring it up here, who is who's to say it's it's weathered enough to put it back up or not? You know, is that going to be me? Is that going to be Howie? Yeah. Well, if I'm not here, Howie's not here, now it's going to be someone else's determination if it's weathered or not. So you don't have any criteria or threshold to determine what makes it to go back up. Yeah, but if it's going to be up for, for it's going to take some damage into it. It is, but I see your point. And that's why you just make it clean, just you got to start the process over again. Well, the other standpoint of that fact is you start this program over for the second year, Okay, I've already got my banner. I don't need to order a banner. And the next thing that person knows, they're behind the eight ball and past the deadline because they assumed their banner was going to be applicable to fly the second year. No, I think somewhere on here, I think I'm pretty sure it says, and it doesn't, it's, it's only good for one year. Okay. Yeah. Good. Oh, no, back to you, Mr. Kowski, on your talk. Oh, talking about when we might get together to talk about what we would like to see happen in the city. I thought the last council meeting, we kind of talked about putting that off until right. the spring of next year, and depending upon the sure. three vacancies that you're going to have, what's going to happen at that point. Yeah. Fine. Um, if we'd have a new council, <coughs> put it off until they can go. And again, I, I think the Charter Review Commission is probably going to want to see what our direction is or what the city's direction is at that point, due to the fact that you're going to have three people coming on board, their thoughts of what direction the city needs to go could possibly alter that here. Council's direction, not the charter's direction. So a lot of variance, possible variance. Yeah, there, there's there's a lot of things that possibly need to go in this and after that. We're gonna have two years of the same council. So I would assume that that's going to be a much better situation the way the last first year. In talking with the city of Springfield, they did not have a facilitator. They argued pretty much among themselves. It was a fuck. What did I tell you? Three hundred and seventy-five dollars. Three hundred thirteen dollars and twenty-six cents. Yeah, some. I think that's exactly. I knew the amount, but they had dinner uh, donated. They had two four-hour sessions uh, on two different days. So uh, I, I think this is going to probably be a new council. Kind of look where this goes. There are facilitators that are available, but I think you're talking to some pretty good size bucks. I think it's something to work out on the end. I mean, all around, there and the other way to do guys. You had said spring. Is there any way that you guys can kind of look at that after the, immediately after the new council sat in like January, February? And we say that because we've got some projects going on internally that's going to require that piece to move forward. This is a hot plan update. Uh, so if it's okay, could, is that is that something that we want to do like more in early 2022 when it's immediately sat? So we can go through with it. We don't want to wait till like the spring of next year, do we? I, I would say you know, we don't want to keep spring no later than the end of February. Okay, so as soon as they're sat, we can right. start running with it. Start. And we've been talking about this for almost a year. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, are you okay with that time? Does that work? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, with the comp plan, it, I don't want to put too much, invest too much in a comp plan right now. And then at the beginning of the year, the vision changes and have to redo the comp plan. So, um, you know, as far as the comp plan, I mean, we're at that 10 year when it should be done. So, um, sooner the better on that one. But, but still, I want to do it right. So, I mean, that means putting off until the beginning of next year. That's the thing we're going to do. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah
be the, mm -hmm. the other thing about the whole scenario, this could be done after your election and bring your, if there are new members of the council elected, bring those into the poll. Right. So. No, the election's in November, so the January they're just sat for in the first meeting of January. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, I don't know what your year-end workload is going to be, whether or not this would work in with it, or whether it will have to. I mean, it, our year-end is mm -hmm. nuts for Colleen, at least. But mine doesn't yeah, that her doesn't have impact right. with us. Her closing the system down with the books, that'll take her out of it, but she doesn't. Well, also, depending on the discussion and topics and what they want to mm -hmm. put in place, you're not going to probably be able to put much of it in place until the following year to you adjust the following year's budget to, you know, because the budget will be done. Yeah, and that's another thing, too, because usually the year end, we're scrambling to still develop our budget that's going to be approved in March. But, you know, CIP is coming to you guys in August, and we're going to get that done, and our budget's going to be approved enough and going before December exactly. even hits. So. You, you, you have a year, technically, I guess, mm -hmm. to, to get the ball rolling on the project that we're discussing. Yeah. So. Okay. So that's good. January 1, you guys get your new council to set run with your, um, re your retreat. We can send, continue on with our comp plan that Derek's working on. And I think I think, I think, think the timing will be actually almost perfect. Perfect. I like the idea of two four-hour sessions so that you've got time to mull over the first four hours and refine it or come up with changes or whatever. All right. Anything else? Not that I'm aware of. Bridge, staff, anyone? Anything else? I got a quick update for uh, Uncle Graham. The uh, property that we spoke about in the previous ones uh, on Prentice. The one that's been vacant for several several years. Yes, the two council uh, meetings ago, you had mentioned Fenwick, and I think you meant Prentice. 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 I, it threw me off a little bit. Uh, just this past week, we did. We have got more updates on that property. We have condemned it, um, but we have been contacted by the owner who in Kentucky, but their family who is near us, and they are actually going to attempt to try to sell it now. You know. To anybody who looks at it, it's, it's not much there, but anything could be fixed. So, I mean, if they could sell it and, and possibly someone come in and, and you know, uh, rebuild it, uh, a rebuilt house would be better than an empty lot. So, um, we're working with them on time wise, but it, at least the condemnation kind of stops where it's, even if they sell it, someone can't move into it without being fixed up. So, uh, it, it tightens the, the pre building. How, how long are we giving are we giving them a certain amount of time so uh, right now I mean we're just giving them I mean 30 days even if we go to a nuisance payment where we're going to go for a demo I mean, we're still months out from being able to go to that process um, just time wise so they have some time but they know they're they're under the gun on a, on a time uh, the realtor did call and talk to our folks working officer as well and kind of you know they don't have high hopes for the property because of the condition, but you never know. Uh, part of city possibly renovated. Um, um, fingers crossed. But uh, but it is uh, it is in the works. So, okay. Communication with me there is better than council is going on. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Graham. Thank you, Mr. Hutchinson. Anyone else? Got two heads and two gentlemen. Bring forth their thoughts and then all of them. I think they'll have one. Yeah. Yeah. Don Hall and the other gentleman, I think, is great. Well, you know, it was a thought that we had more time than we were here, but your call. You mean what, just to see if they want to go over there? Yeah, I they want to go over their thoughts. You've you seen the letter. Apparently not. Mm -hmm. Apparently not. Well, they've got some questions. Oh, okay. No, I didn't see it. I don't think. 
Okay. They, they emailed me, and I wanted to, they wanted it on the on the packet, but I did not let it go on the packet. Okay. I was going to talk to you guys about what I talked about the meeting situation. Okay. Then just how on the, on the phone with Mr. Cook today about other stuff. I brought that up and just shot him what they sent me okay. earlier today. All right. Well, Mr. Gopes, you want to adjourn or do you have anything else? Can we put them in the communication? Uh, I don't think we, we can't add them under communications now. The agenda's been laid out, can we? You know, to make a motion to change the agenda. Yep. Okay. You can do that on your way. Yeah. All right. I'll do that. All right. So I need a motion. You have it. You have it. Okay. Motion to adjourn by Ms. Eggleston. Second by Mr. Jim. Okay. <coughs> Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Yeah. Councilman Nogowski. Yes. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Grant. Yes. Motion to adjourn accepted by. All right. We'll be back at 7 o'clock.